Welcome, man. Welcome back to the channel. How's everybody doing? Oh, this lovely Thursday. The day is the night. It is 8 16. All right, guys, what we're going to do is talk about this is a last minute decision. Uh, I have been bombarded with questions relating to uh, computer updates. All right, uh, flash updates, if you want to call it. They go either way computer update, flash updates. But the thing I'm being asked is about um, transmission. Uh, some of my, you know, followers do not believe mechanics when they tell them your transmission needs to be updated. They go, how can you update a physical transmission? No, we obviously, when they tell you that, guys, if somebody ever tell you that, what they're referring to is uh, your transmission computer system. Obviously, your transmission is computer control. Today's cars, most cars out now. Let me, let me say it like this. Most cars out now are computer operated, computer dependent. There is a computer that monitors inputs and relay outputs doing computing. OK, yeah. A lot of the transmission, uh, even the, uh, some of our old, some of the Chrysler's old models, such as the NAG1 trim. The NAG1 transmission had its own separate TCM housed under the steering wheel. Now, a lot of the newer stuff they tend to incorporate the engine controller with the transmission controller. Uh, in some cases, they call it a um, NGC, next generation controller. In other words, just one box. A lot of cars still have two separate boxes. Got a TCM over here and you got a PCM over here. What's up, Andrew Scott? What's his name? What's going on? So depending on the year of your car would dictate that. That is nothing etched in stone. Yes, the days of the old hydraulic transmission is gone. There's no more modulator valve. There's no more bands to adjust. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All of this stuff has been converted to uh, uh, the last hydraulic transmission I built was the three speed 31 T. No, it wasn't even a T. 31 is a three speed found in the neons and the old <laughs> shadows and sun dances. I was the transmission man back then, so I did all of those overhauls. Uh, yes, there was a time I was adjusting band. You tighten it all the way up to specs, and you backstep it three turns. Any old, old heads in here? Andre Head was popping my dude, and I never knew that. Yeah, uh, so PCMs, control engine controllers, uh, control engine functions. TCM controls transmission functions. But like I say, on some cars, they're all in one freaking box. This is your TCM and your PCM, all right? They save money by putting both functions into one. So the questions I've been getting a lot is, um, JT, this shot, I'm, I'm not in the same states as a lot of my followers. So when they're being told something by their mechanic, they literally call me for uh, guidance, so to speak. Now, <coughs> guys, I'm never going to go on record uh, – calling another mechanic a liar oh he's lying no you don't need this <clears throat> for one reason is i don't know i ain't there i can't tell you if what he's saying is true or not i'm simply not there and even if you turn your damn phone around well, look at this jt well, put me on screen and all that old stuff there's nothing i can do ten thousand miles away but give you verbal advice i i just can't okay so but i will speak uh, of course, one lady put the mechanic on the phone, put me on the phone. I'm talking to the damn mechanic from Pep Boys way out there in no man's land. All right, why you think you need that? Blah, 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 blah. I can't, you know what I'm saying? Guys, at the end of the day, I'm in this industry, and I wouldn't say techs got to stick together because there are some scam shops out there that will literally try to get over on females. That's why they call me. Um, but I can't get on the phone and say, man, I don't think she need that. Yeah, that's counterproductive that's that's not right I, yeah i will not do that i will ask him why and can he explain it better to her and do she get a warranty by doing it so i don't do that but like i said i've been getting a lot of questions and i don't mind you know what i'm saying i especially when you're using uh the cash app feature okay you can't just call me in the middle of the damn day wait a minute it's two o'clock in the afternoon i'm under the damn transmission or engine trying to get it out please Please, some random dude on YouTube. Hey, I got a question. No, bro. Now, if I get this sound, ching, ching, y'all know how to cash out notification sound. 
I'm going to leave that damn transmission hanging right there with one boat and come and see about you, okay? Uh, that's I mean, I'm just being real, okay? One, a couple of things that um, tells me is you serious about whatever you're doing, okay? If you donate it, it's a donate feature I had to put in place, guys, uh, for people that's trying to get in touch with me now. And I did not know there was that many people, okay? Yes, you can ask the same question you asked me over the phone in the comment section. The only thing about that is I can't answer it until I see it. All right. I mean, yeah, I'm throughout the day. I'm on my phone looking at comments. I'm on the computer. But still, some people need to know right now. The way to do that is to use that cash out feature. I'll drop that. I'll leave the transmission hanging. It, it wasn't important. No way. Just let it fall. OK, I need to see about you guys. All right. Uh, so what was I going with this? Yeah, uh, so from that standpoint, yeah, uh, and it's a lot of females that uh, utilize that and call me, and I do the best I can. No, guys, I don't have the answers to everything, but I will give it my best shot. How did I get off topic? We're talking about Flash Update, guys. Uh, let's go over a little history on that. What's up, trashy new gear players? Should be 30. Should be what? 30, 30 I think. Uh, 30. Oh, 30. Damn, what you know about that? I don't think it's a T. T is... Well, T is transverse, front wheel drive, and H is hydraulic. It was a three speed. It was found in the down, <laughs> the Dodge Shadow, Plymouth Sundance, the freaking Neon, the earlier built Neon. Man, I used to take them things. I still got my tools. Tools is worthless right now. Pull the pump, you know, you screw the damn thing in there, and it's got little jackhammers on it. Bloop, bloop, bloop. That tool universal, so it can be used now. But I'm talking about tools to compress the input clutch or the clutch assemblies and all of that oh my goodness uh yes uh i was the king of that but uh back in the day yes so what's up pt level finally flash um uh, flash update been around for a long time man it's not the new pt level uh yeah man i was around during the days when there was no flash updating going on all right well, andre had me here uh, he was in, he was there around during those early days too guys there was times when manufacturer found something they need to change, guess what? They had to, especially if it's under warranty, they had to mail us a hard part, a computer. Physical damn computer! We got to put in the car just for the simplest of updates. Now, I can't belittle the updates because a lot of them was emission related. And car makers take that stuff serious. Don't be little. What the hell you mean, little? No. So even if it's something simple as raising the idle up to... 800 RPM doing cold starts. Yeah. They had to send out a physical hard computer. We put it on the car. Now, when the customer go outside and start their car and it's cold, they start it up, RPM going to be a little higher. Instead of 700, it's going to be 800. All for emissions. Can you imagine that? $1,000, well, $1,000 back then, but expensive computers being sent out just to raise your idle up 100 RPMs for cold start purposes and emission purposes. We had to physically put a computer in. Now, computers are sophisticated. Double lead proms. Double lead prom. What does that stand for? Who is good? Electronically erasable, programmable, read-only memory. Something like that. I'm pretty damn close. Well, anyway, with that invention allowed car computers to erase tuning, so to speak. They use the word tuning in the uh, high-performance industry. All right. Yeah, I'm I'm very familiar with uh uh I frequent all park garage all the time and they always tune in something. Tuning is something is when you go in a, into a computer and wipe out an old software or old programming and put in new programming to better that car or enhance performance, whatever it is you tuning it for. Car makers not gonna be you know giving you 800 horsepower tuning, okay? They will, however, make your car uh you know better for emission purposes but my point is with that invention now they consider literally do that from the comfort of their home okay we have a jtec some type of interface that we plug into a computer we get on a server and download the software the tuning software from them from there it goes into our computer from our computer we are hardwired to our scan to which is plugged into the data link connector all right. From there, the software leaves our computer and goes into your car magically, mysteriously. Uh, yeah. And from there, now you have the updates. OK, but 
instead of physical computers now we doing it everything electronically so back to my point i gotta get on with this back to my point uh yes there's a such thing as transmission updates okay not only are engines computer control or monitors so to speak transmissions are computer controlled and totally monitored uh the zf transmission we use the front wheel drive 948 te strictly 100 percent computer control there's a big ass tcm sitting on the top of that transmission that monitors everything <laughs> he knows his here they want they want to know everything I quite there's a reason for that they want to know how to perform the shift patterns and things like that so yeah now from time to time transmissions need to be updated engineers sit back and look at all the input data from customers every time i come to a stop from leaving third gear my transmission will bump so they get so many of those the engineers go to work they sit on the computer and rewrite the damn programming y'all rewrite the programming issue it as a tsb or a notification or warranty a lot of the flash updates are warranty guys let me tell y'all this uh my warranty administrator explained to me a lot of that stuff is powertrain warranty so if you guys out there paying for that you might want to check and make sure uh it's not covered on your powertrain warranty because think about it for a second why would car makers want you taking your car into the shop with you under the impression you got a hard transmission failure just to find out it's not there have been many times a customer come in i'm still on the warranty my transmission ain't acting up i need a new transmission <laughs> just for her three hours later to get a call ma'am you're done i'm done y'all overhaul my transmission in three hours no ma'am we just flash updated and you're good to go you're no longer bumping in third gear Stuff like that have to be explained to customers because they literally thinking they about to get a new transmission when all we did uh, was programming. So from a mechanical, from a career standpoint, <laughs> there went the transmission man. I was the freaking transmission man. I was JT the transmission man. I was overhauling and everything. It was a good thing. Oh, there was a good reason. I When I got into this industry, I focused on the complete car. All right. Had I knew nothing but only had I specialized in transmission, I would be sitting around doing this because transmission is not breaking or falling apart like they used to. Yeah, 604. I mean, who's that? Trash new 604. If you know about 31 TA, surely you know about the 604. That thing was falling like flies. We was building those every day. My point is, what's my point? Uh, yeah, so that. You may think you need an overhaul or new trans. You can simply need a flash update. All right. Brino, Greeno, Taurus, what's up? 5.3 Chevy and once in a while. Cold start engine clunks. Goes away right away. You left out the year model. If it's a new car, <laughs> you could be, you could need something simple as a flash update, my friend. All right. If it's a new car. All right. Now, old cars uh, utilize or, or old cars utilize that technology as well not the real old cars but older cars let me put it like that okay but the thing about that you don't really want to flash update an older car guys y'all know what's taking place when you flash update a uh, computer the the interface the cables and the cores that you're using <laughs> i think I, I i might say this wrong but it's it's going to spike up a whole uh, spike up voltage right a voltage spike a huge voltage spike going to go into your computer and uh wipe some things out that's what it's doing removing the old programming all right this voltage spike is still high all right <laughs> so there went the old stuff and it's got a spike in or i might be using the wrong terminology but it's got to put in a new software in other words on the older car it is extremely risky all right it is risky i don't give a damn where you go you can go to the dealership lake's garage dad's garage anybody's garage it is some risky stuff now uh so i wouldn't be too concerned with flash updating a older model car simply because your car is already broken in. your car is already uh set in its ways <laughs> all right you can't change it's like a person it's like a once you get a certain age you set in your ways and i ain't changing nothing i'm 80 now what the hell look like change yeah, your car already set. So flashing it may unintentionally hurt something. 
because it's trying to put you at a period of time when your car was still technically almost new. All right, guy, let me do a summing up like this. If your car over 100,000 miles, no, don't touch your damn computer. Don't do nothing. Oh, wait a minute. Don't flash a damn thing. Leave it alone. It's set. All right. Imagine you see a flash update. Your car didn't get this back in 92. No, back in 2014. You missed out on that flash, but it's still available. You take your car to the dealership. Some wise guy, new mechanic, pull it up. Hey, you got a flash update. But I got 180,000 miles. I know, but this flash update will improve uh, cold start. All right. Think about this for a second. With that many miles, your piston rings are already sitting in. Your valves are already set in. They're going, they burning oil. Your engine burning oil, consuming oil at this point. Your engine is not the same as it was as new. All right. So why would you flash your computer to capture those updates when <laughs> Yeah, it's redundant. You, you mess no, don't confuse. You're just going to confuse it. So if you're over 100,000 miles, this is my opinion. I'm entitled to my opinion because this is my channel. Yeah, I get that right, I guess. But I wouldn't get my car flash update if you got, if you will over 100,000 miles. Your car already set in its ways and the change is not going to even be noticeable. All right. But for those with a semi new car, uh, yeah, you do to something. And a lot of car makers, want to get that done what's up evelyn rodriguez all right guys let's do this um i need to go to the screen right quick share screen uh entire screen because we want to look at now i, I didn't did my my part but i i don't know how well i did it so i want to read some tasks uh what is the ecu flash update known as tuning um where my damn glasses at i can't see uh it refers to the process of reprogramming or modifying a vehicle vehicle electronic control unit. Uh, let's do this one. What are the benefits of ECU flash? ECU flashes flashing when done correctly with the proper expertise. That's another thing, guys. Uh-uh, hold tight. That's another thing. Uh, when done corrected by the perfect. Now, I may catch some flack with it for this or saying this because I always do. And it may be warned. It may not. You know, I get it. But I ain't. <laughs> One of those guys where, where only a dealership should perform flash updates on your cars. All right, not not to take anything away from the uh, you know the aftermarket shops, the Lakes Garage, the that. Not to take anything. They may have the equipment to do that. I'm just speaking uh, my recommendations. Okay, if you can afford it, and if it's not free, again, before you do anything, check and make sure it's not covered under your powertrain. But the dealership, in my opinion, should be the only one flash updating your car. And I say that for this reason, because of the equipment that they use. Yeah, they use factory factory scan tools. Fact, you may have a scan tool that just so happened <laughs> to can flash update a computer. <laughs> yeah, it's just one of the added bonuses of your scan tool. It's not solely meant for that. But the scan tools used in the shops and the dealership, they scan tools are for that purpose. OK, so, yeah, I mean, and not only that, if something go wrong doing a flash and guys, there are some things that can go wrong doing a flash. I mean, you know what's happening when you're flashing, right? You're relying on the Internet. OK, that not you're relying on the Internet to download the flash. I get that. So once it's downloaded, it's then it's to be put in your car. So if you can get past the hurdle of even downloading the software from their servers, uh. The risk is not as much, but if you flashing directly from a server to the car, yeah, that's extremely ris risky because the internet could cut out on you. Okay, now transferring from the computer to your car. Our part of white tech, I think the software is downloaded into the white tech. Once it's there, all right, we safe. Remember, the white tech is already plugged in your 16 in your data link connector. So from there to there should be a breeze right it should be smooth look you right there dog you hooked up to it and everything go ahead on and put it in from the instructions by you of course on the computer so then it goes in but there's a lot that can go wrong and in my experience a dealer personnel know what to do when something go wrong like we got a feature called uh rehabilitate or re in other words bring it back to life <laughs> 
if something drop out doing a flash, your computer is locked, bricked. Your computer is bricked. You ain't going no damn way well. You done. That's it. Zip. All right. So we got a feature that we utilize to unbrick it. Uh, Pep Boys may not have that feature, but Pep Boys may have a scam to that can perform a flash update. <laughs> Don't chance it. Don't do it. Take that damn car to the dealer. All right. Where was I? I got to get through this. I'm running freaking behind. Uh, what are we talking about? What are the benefits? Enhanced driving experience. ECU flash can improve thought. Of, it, it's going to improve whatever it's intended to improve. None of this nonsense right here. If the flash update, if you flashing it for this reason, then yeah, it's going to improve up there. It's not uh, one size fit all going to update everything on your car. <laughs> now you're going to have a perfectly running car. And guys, for the record, I'm one of those guys when I'm doing something as simple as a basic tune up. I check and see if your computer up to date. My opinion, sometimes those flashes are more important than your actual spark plugs. Spark plugs are lasting forever now. So the days are gone when your electrolyte or your spark plug is shot at 30,000 miles. All right. So if I get a ticket, JT, can you do this tune up? Yeah, I can do it. They bring me plugs. It's a damn shame. Tune up nowadays is just spark plugs. <laughs> There's a lot go into trying to you know, get your car back to its peak performance because that's the sole purpose of a tune-up in the first place. Restore your car back to peak performance, all right, or as close as possible. So my point is, uh, when I do a tune-up, I always verify if the computer is up to date because some of those updates, I, we can see that. They now give us that uh, chance to see what's being changed. Back in the day, and give a damn what we thought. Y'all knows it. Y'all don't need to know that. Just flash it. Just do what we say. So I never knew what I was changing. I'm a nosy mechanic. I like to know when I put this programming in here, what did I change? All right. So now we can see that via the TSB. Here's what this flash will address. Cold start performance improvement. Shifting into third gear improvement. So it will lay it all out. All right. So if I see a t TSB relating to a flash update, and I'm tuning up your car, and I know your car will benefit from this flash, I'm going to do it. Now, if I write up the estimate, then yeah, I have a chance to upsell it, okay? If I don't, you come in, I just want to tune up. I'm a nice guy. Sometimes I do it on my own. But we had to stop that because uh, one guy locked up a computer, a uh, flash update in the computer, uh, just because he was a nice guy. I don't know. Uh, he said it was a flash update, so I decided to do it. And the customer, I ain't asked for that. <laughs> customer, turn on your ass in the with, boy with the quickness. I ain't asked for that. Y'all paying for my computer. And I mean, technically, he broke it. I mean, it locked up. It bricked. That's what I say. A lot can go wrong with flashing, guys. So it's not no cakewalk. And a lot of guys always ask me, "Can I flash my own computer?" I do it myself. We're gonna get to that. Let me finish this. Uh, so ECU flash is it worth it? Uh, to judge whether ECU flash is valuable, we need to consider the following aspect. A whole bunch of stuff that I ain't about to read. What's up, Eric Motion? Trump is truth. Turbo 416. It's a recall to do the flash. It depends on the car, the year, the make, and the model, Tom. It depends on a lot of things. You should I flash my 41T? No, PT Lover, leave that damn thing alone. All 41Ts out now that's still on the road been out forever. You're not going to improve anything by flashing it, uh, my friend. Okay. Especially anything shift improvement related. Okay. Yeah. you take It's too big a risk at this point, uh, PT Long. Uh, what was I doing? Yes. Uh, is it worth it? Yeah, it depends, guys, uh, what is being done. How long does it take? Uh, depends. 30 minutes at the max. All right. We'll pay. We'll pay three tenths. So whatever three tenths is under warranty, we'll pay three tenths. Is that 15 minutes? Yeah, nothing at all. Okay. Now the big question. This is what I want to go to because uh, people always ask me this. All right. Uh, can you flash reprogram yourself? <laughs> guys, uh, and a lot of guys are cocky like that too, boy. Uh they this some of the this some of the equipment right here. A lot of guys are cocky. A lot of guys will go out and buy this equipment like this. I mean, they got a little money on their hands, and they will 18 minutes trash. Okay. 
Adaptives are reset when parts are replaced or sometimes to help diagnose problems. That's what's up. Yeah, a lot of guys with a lot of money, they'll go out and buy this stuff just so they can flash their computer and tell their buddies, I flash my own computers. But the amount that this stuff costs, cost, it's not really worth it, guys. You can pay a shop. What Every shop going to charge one hour diagnostic, one hour labor. Whatever that shop hourly rate is, is what you can will end up paying. Okay, here's the question. Can you flash pro reprogram yourself? Well, yeah, if you are willing to invest in all of this equipment. So basically, look, a universal VCI runs around 1,200. Can y'all see that? Hold on. This system uh, runs about $1,200 uh, while a make-specific unit runs about 500 However, you can find some used ones on eBay. In other words, why would you invest on this? Just to do it one time. Yeah, just take your car. Instead of spending $1,200, spend what's $100. Yeah, every shop costs $100 an hour. And go let them do it. And put all that risk on them. All right, that's what I would do if you ask me. All right, now, I want to do something because my buddy, uh, Mike P. Mike P. ain't hardly ever in the stream, but he uh, he touched on something. He asked me a question. Mike P. literally asked me this, and uh, he was sincere and real. Because Mike P owned a couple of Chrysler. He asked me, uh, why don't the dealership, why don't the dealership have to pay for flash updates? In other words, why is that the customer's responsibility? Why the customer have to pay for updates that should have been known before the customer bought the car? That could be considered a good point. But Mike, let me tell you something about the difference between uh, a car manufacturer and a dealer. All right, everybody want to know why the dealer don't do something for free. Dealer, dealer, dealer should do it for free. The dealer didn't make your car. The dealer didn't build your car. The dealer is merely a middleman between the car manufacturer and you, the customer. Okay, so why on earth should a dealer do anything to any car for free? They don't work for free. All right, again, we just the middleman between the car manufacturer and the customer. All right, so... uh. They didn't build or design your car. If you're not paying for something that's done at a dealership, it's simply because your car manufacturer is paying for it. Yeah. If you ain't paying for it, the dealer is not paying for it. Your car manufacturer is paying for it because you have some type of warranty still in place. All right. So in other words, somebody has to pay the dealer for anything that's done to any car. It's either the customer or the car manufacturer. So Get out of the habit of thinking the dealer should do something for you free. If they do it and you didn't pay again, that's simply because the car manufacturer paid the dealer to do it. All right? Yeah, we get we make chump change when they do when that happens. It's called warranty work. Mechanics don't like that. All right. So we're not rooting for you to get something for free just so we can be underpaid. Now, in my opinion, the time sucks. All right. Three tenths to flash update a car. It sometimes can take 20 minutes to go out and get the car and bring it into the shop. Are all the car manufacturers want to give us the three tenths? Yeah, sure. You walk away happy because you ain't paid jack. All right, it was free to you. But the poor guy, mechanic that worked for the dealer, had to do it for chump change and pennies. All right, so that's a little sympathy I should have for people like that. I don't think you should have to pay for powertrain flash updates. Little nick picky stuff that's gonna improve your life. Yeah, you should have to pay. All right, and that and guys, keep in mind, ain't no going backwards. Um, ain't no more, ain't no going back once you go forward. In other words, there are some flash updates that will change the way your transmission act when moving. Say, for instance, you it used to be a time you can drive your car and open the door and still be driving, right? Now, once you took your car in and some wise guy mechanic flash updated or a recall instructed them to flash update it, you can no longer do that. Once you open your door, boom, your car going in the park. <laughs> that flash update changed that. It was a lot of um, safety issues going on. Kids opening the door while the car was running. They don't want your car moving if the door is open. All right. So once that flash is in place, you're done. I, and you can't go backwards. I want it back. I didn't ask for that. I want it back. No, man. The car manufacturer knows best. They say you shouldn't be able to keep driving while your door open. And you know how bad that sucks to an alignment mechanic, uh, a front-end suspension mechanic? They say when we go on alignment rack, guys, 
sometimes we'll open the door to look at the front wheel to see if we going up straight. Nah, 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 not no more. You open that damn door, boom! Your ass in park. Damn, can I say that? Let me stop. I'm monetized. But yeah, so ain't no going back once you go to some universal flash. You can't go back. It would take a whole... You we was you have to get a whole nother computer. But we ain't going back. You need special equipment to go backwards. So always keep that in mind. All right, I'm done with this. What time is it? Oh, it is 845. How's everybody doing? All right. Uh yes, the 31 TH PT Love in the building. Uh Green O Taurus. Uh it's a 507. Uh oh, oh seven, Green O. I don't know, man. I my brain has been depleted of all anything under O10. <laughs> is that a word anything under 10 I, I can't i had to move old knowledge out and prepare the stuff i know now i'm slowly moving it out in preparation for the ev stuff yeah it's only so much your brain can hold right something has to exit 07 08 models 09 models 10 models slowly going out 21 22 23 slowly coming in in your brain as a medium, <laughs> as a window. Only so much that mug, especially as you age. I'm getting everybody's getting older. So, you know, as you age, your memory do this. I can't remember some things. <sighs> yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Reno, I, I can I, I couldn't tell you, my friend. I really don't know. Uh, I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, by the way, Evelyn Rodriguez, how are you? No, PT Lover, leave that damn thing alone, man. And he's seen your pick by the 300 v6 from the auction on fuel line and disconnected don't know where it goes you need to find out uh don't start yeah hey you can send a picture i have a uh, instagram that i'm barely on i have a facebook page that i'm on more than the instagram uh jt the car guy on facebook my my guy all right so you 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 have a better chance of reaching me on facebook than instagram but uh send it there i can tell you uh what's up gilberto how are you uh, I mean, all flashes ain't recalled, but a lot of them are, and I suspect you need to get it done. Guys, when you come into the dealer, when you come to the dealership, they automatically run your VIN. From that VIN, they can tell them what's available and what's not available. What recall, I mean. They can't tell you if there's a flash update on your car. A mechanic has to use his device to tell you that. But from the device that the guys that write your car up, they can pull your VM and tell you if you have recalls relating to flash updates. And if that's the case, that's free. So a lot of y'all bad mouth the dealership and y'all so burnt or so dealership. I hate the dealership. They charge too much and they take too long. And they suck. Yeah, easy, man. Easy. Sometimes the dealership can be your friend, man. Dealership mechanics, you know, they get a high of knowing they was the last stop. Like, all these cars being towed in from other shop, Cousin Pookie them and all. Yeah. I get a kind of kick out of that. Hey, go another one from Cousin Pookie. They don't know what the hell they doing over there. And it turned out to be not so technical as it seemed. That's because the techs at the dealership are well trained on a specific brand. All right? Brand. Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram, such and such. All right? Now. Guys like Lakes Automotive, Dad's Garage, a little bit of everything, all right? So, yeah, there's a difference. But at the end of the day, they still work on cars. But at the end of the day, a car is a car is a car is a freaking car. Uh, when should I, when should adaptive values be reset to default setting? I do that every time um, I do a tune-up or... Every time, well, it, it used to be just by merely disconnecting the battery is going to happen by default. Not anymore. You literally got to instruct your computer to default all values back to, uh, anytime I change anything drivability related, my scan tool is hooked up. I'm resetting everything. Uh, uh, adaptive memory, okay? So the customer, the car is going to have to relearn the customer, and that don't take long at all, all right? So everything, yeah, I reset every freaking thing. What's up, Chris? Yo, bro, 26.3, but I blew the crank fuse at idle. Replaced the fuse. Now fuses are good. Now the car at idle dies when I put in drive. The car dies. A 06 Chrysler 300 SRT, I'm assuming that's a 5.7 Hemi. 
Replace the fuse now. Fuses are good now. The car at idle dies when I put in drive. Oh man, you got a you got some shorts you got to track down. Okay, now it's dying for a reason. Why is it dying? Is the computer being spiked out, shorted out? All right, you got to find out why it's dying because that will lead you to your problem. I had a problem like that one time. Uh, the alternator was seizing up. When that happened, it will overload the circuit and pop the fuse to the PCM. From there, you get no more crank. So, yeah, all this stuff. If your alternator is slowly dying or slow death and it's seizing up on you or becoming hard to turn, all that back feed can spike out stuff. So I'm not saying that's your problem. I'm saying you got to track it down. All right. Uh, yeah, it's not that old of a car. I see. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what scan to. I don't know how what you will. I'm not familiar with the aftermarket scan tools. I'm only familiar with the one I use. And I know what screen I would monitor if I had this problem. All right. So, yeah, it's it, it can get crazy, man. 210 on the dash and my computer got flashed. What? <laughs> Charged like Bull Dermot, but no crash. What up, my folks? <laughs> What's up, Eric Motion? What's popping, man? What is going on out there? What time? We had uh, 852, guys. We got a little bit more time. Let me entertain some more of these comments. Adapters are reset when parts are replaced. Yes. Or something to help die. Yes. I reset it every time, man. I just bring everything back to uh back to normal, man. It could take up to 18 minutes to flash update a controller. Did you see the Jeep relay recall on the recall? Yes. Uh that's kind of old. Um, but yeah, they changed it. A lot of those relays was garbage. Okay. They will melt and plastic would fall on the terminal, and people be back with the same problem after the recall done. <laughs> so now the redesign is uh where you Hide in the relay in a secret cover, guys. G14 classified FBI type stuff. All right, we're gonna take a relay and put it in this box. We're gonna take a cover and seal that mug off, keep it with all that heat and all that crap away from it. We're gonna flip it upright, or is it that? Yeah, and we're gonna bolt it to your frame of your car somewhere. All right, so that problem shouldn't happen again. That should be the last recall concerning that, but we'll see. All right. I have done several of those. I actually like doing those. They're quicker. Uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. At that point in the game, 100,000 miles, let it loan, man. Let it loan. All right. Don't forget uh, when you need the multiple thousands of dollars worth of scan to, to do the little reset, relearn for reset. <laughs> Dad's Garage, what's up, man? Uh, what's popping, man? How are you, man? Uh, dealership is just a plug. What that mean? What's up, Uncle Mark in the building? What's popping, man? Uh, yes, thanks for stopping by, man. He didn't miss engine time. Uh-oh, did you get that? What was you working on? Uncle Mark, I know good and damn well you filming this stuff, man. You know we like content. content. And like I told you, I brag on Uncle Mark all the time on my videos because I be doing a video, and I know I'm going to get drilled on some of the stuff I be doing because it's not that I'm lazy. I told you I'm not cut out for tutorial videos. All right, guys, grab you a half-inch wrench. That's the size, half-inch wrench, and turn like, I, 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 oh, I can't do it. I can't do it, dog. I can't do it. I tried. I tried. Hey, Uncle Mark, hey, let Uncle, hey, go holler at Uncle Mark. Uncle Mark got similar uh, videos, similar topics, okay? He owned a couple of Chrysler, so a lot of stuff, even the oil filter adapter has them, all right? Yeah, he go through with you step by step. Me, you just gonna see me yanking stuff out. All right. So yeah, I ain't cut out for it. I just ain't that ain't I can't do it, man. Um, yes, Carlos, that's what's up, my friend. How are you, man? GM vehicles now do the same thing when you open the door. Oh, really? <laughs> hey man, that freaked me out the very first time I tried to get on the lavin rat. Dad's garage. I opened the door. Let me see what's going on. I thought I had broke the car, man. That shit banged in the park. I'm like, how the hell you get back in park? I didn't put you in. I'm talking to the car. I ain't put you in park. How you get in park, dog? There's some spooky stuff going on here. So I had to close the door, turn the car, reset everything. Maybe it was a fluke. I put it back in gear. I was slowly going. I opened the door again. The same thing. I said, all right, wait a minute. Yeah, we had just flashed to update this stuff, man. Uh, yeah, car makers know what's best, I guess. They don't think y'all should be riding around. 
Foley the one turn radiator fan out. Uh oh, any idea scan two turns and all? Oh, if your scan two, if you can command, that's what you're doing when you actuate it. We call it actuators. If you can get on your scan two and tell a specific device to actuate, in other words, turn on, turn off, turn my fan on, and it, and it do it. Uh, your fan good, your computer good. Wait a minute. So that begs the question. Okay, yeah. So your fan good and your computer good. Now, whatever other items, input device. Remember, in order for a fan to come on, it's looking for some inputs, right? Go on a couple of inputs for fan. Cooling temp sensor. Average car, when the temperature reached 220 or 230. All right. Hey, fan. What's up, man? What you going to do, dog? We need you. I got you, dog. It turned off. What's another reason a fan will come on? AC, high pressure. Condenser, high side pressure gets high. Remember, guys, uh, the condenser needs airflow as well. And what gives it that airflow if your car is not moving? If you're stationary, you got to have something that pull airflow through. That's what a fan do. <sighs> pull air through. All right? It don't. <sighs> a fan is not blowing outwards. It's pulling in. That's why when you're on the highway driving 50, 60 miles an hour, you don't need no fan, dog, because ram air is doing the job. That's when pressure drops, okay, and the computer will direct the fan. All right, dog, we good. We don't need you right now. We on the freeway. All right, wait till we get back to the city, then I'll holler at you then and tell you to come on. But for now, all right, inputs. AC outside pressure high. Cooling temp pressure high. That's some more. Depending on this caravan, what's another one? That's a couple other ones. Uh, and the fan just, no, you got, you got one of those big-ass block relays on this year model. Or is it the little black relay? I can't remember, Uncle Mark. Oh. Oh. Won't turn. Caravan. Won't turn. Radiator fan on. And, uh, scan 2 turns it on. And can read temps. Relay works. Dodge dealer has it. But just confirm what I am saying. No fan even at 226. That's, that's when it comes on. So which begs the question. How is the computer able to determine? The computer is not determining when to turn it on. You are directing it to turn it on using the scan tool. So, what input is the computer not getting to make it turn on when it's supposed to? Now, you say, uh, I can read temps. Dodge dealer has it, but just confirm what I'm saying. No fan, even at 226. I'm assuming that's when the fan is directed to come on. So, you get to 226, still no fan, which means now you're going to overheat. What else is directed? What else is given? priority or instruction telling instruction to turn that fan on uh damn uh did it say any codes because you just literally you say relay bad a uh, relay good uh, you got a physical typical iso relay or the big block style relay on the block on the bumper all right um uh, there's a solid state relay bolted on the bumper on some 2010 models. So look, take a look. I mean, sometimes you can pull the cover back and look down there and see it, but um, but that usually give off a code. If you don't have any code, still look at it anyway. All right. Yeah, that's interesting. Man, um, what the dealer? What the dealer? Wait a minute! Wait, wait a damn minute! You said that the dealership? What? What they say? I, I can't, Uncle Mark, you can't have me, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you know, JT said, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, we stick together. Us us dealers stick together. So whatever they say, I'm tripping. Uh, but I'm curious what they say. Let me know what they say, man. Uh, what 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 What's going on? Uh, yeah, Mopar. Okay. What's up? Fluff dog, fluffy Mexican. Man. I nodded off. I woke up and saw Fluffy live. What the hell was you doing live yesterday? It was Wednesday yesterday. I was like, that Fluffy Mexican? Wait a minute. Uh, we talking about, oh, flash updating controllers. I don't know how Nissan get down. I don't know how y'all roll, but uh, a lot of our customers seem to be under the impression that a flash, no matter what it's for, should be free. They think the dealership should. The dealership, they think the dealer, like the dealer, like I said earlier, it's just the middleman. Dealer don't, 
Hey, Mr. Customer, yeah, we would do it, but somebody got to pay us. Why well, ain't paying? Well, the person that made your car have to pay us. It's called a warranty, right? So if you can convince them to pay us. We had a couple of customer guys. In some cases, you'd be surprised what you can get covered on the warranty. I might be talking too much, but I've seen a customer call a hotline or a Chrysler hotline or whatever. They had some problems that they felt should have been covered on the warranty. All right. The dealer doing what they the dealer only interested in work that they can get paid. They're not going to put their line or their reputation on the line, making a repair to your car and hope that your warranty pay for it. No, the, most dealers get pre authorization before they even fool with your car. Is they going to pay us? Yeah. Go ahead, JT, put the engine in. All right. So, yeah, there's a couple of we we go tell a couple of customers. You're, it's not covered. You out by one mile. <laughs> I mean, I'm just using an example. You out. Well, what do you want us to do? If we did it, we wouldn't get paid, lady. Y'all the dealer. Y'all should do it for free. No, we didn't build your car. We just the middleman. Call call your car manufacturer. All right, I'm gonna do just that. Hello, Eli Coca, Mr. Chrysler, whoever the hell own FCA or whatever. Listen, I just bought this damn car. I'm one mile out of warranty. All right, I'm sorry. Please help me. See if he changes too, we may get some help. This way y'all mess up at. Some of y'all are so cocky and get all been out of shape. I want my car fixed right now. Click. Did he hang up on me? So get out of your tough guy mentality. I ain't saying call him and cry. <laughs> but show a little sympathy. How you do a judge when you're in trial and you don't want the death penalty? You know, cry a little bit. You know, judge might feel a little sorry for you. Same with car manufacturer. I know, sir. I'm only one mile old. I've been had this problem. And guess what? I got like five other Chrysler at home. That's all I buy because I love them. I mean, it would be a shame for y'all to decline this and lose me as a customer. What do you say? What do you say? Yeah, yeah, man. You're right. Put JT and them back on the phone. And they get back on the phone. They give us an authorization code. Blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, your transmission or your engine is ordered. It'll be here in two days. We got authorization to put it on. We getting paid now, all right? We're only interested in the stuff we can get paid. We didn't build your car, all right? So you can cross that hurdle. My point is, even if you're out of warranty sometime, it's worth a shot, all right? I don't know if they're going to prove it or not. Depending on your history, a lot has to do, like if you really a diehard Chrysler guy, you buy the newest model that come out all the time, and you, they can see that. They already can see that. When you call them, they get information from you. They can see your purchase history, what you have bought, what you own, how your maintenance, all that. They see, oh my goodness, this guy bought, he got three chargers and a Ram 1500. Okay, ma'am. All right, we're going to take care of this. All right, like I say, uh, we're sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, yes, your warranty is out, but as a goodwill, we will like to help you out. And we thank you for being a customer. All right. Have a nice day. She hang up. Oh, JT, come here. You about to get her damn car fixed. How'd I get on this ridiculous rant? Let me go. I'm done. All right. But before I do that, I see some green. I got to go holler at this green. We can turn both speeds on the radiator. Damn, Uncle Mark. So something ain't something other than the command is not getting to the computer. Remember, guys, computers looking for inputs. I just went over through two or three inputs. What is missing? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that year by heart. I wish Uncle Mark gonna make me go into. I'm gonna go into out out. I'm gonna go into somewhere and look at this 2010. Um, uh, yeah, this Dodge dealer stomp. Oh my goodness, what kind of punk ass? What kind of wheezy? They stomp on a Chrysler product? Really? Sit it down here, man, Uncle Mark. We'll find. I'll find a problem. Let me stop. Uh, I can't believe they stomp. Okay, uh, that's crazy. Um, I, I want to look at something when I get off of this thing, man. Speaking, of, what's up? Speaking of alternators, remember not to have the donor vehicle running because it'll spin the jump. Oh, oh, it's spinning backwards, and there's a chance it can uh spike out some. Yeah, um, that was the problem with the one I had. It was just literally froze up. All right. Um, uh, damn, that's crazy. Hey, appreciate the donation, Fluffy Mexicanic. That's what's up, man. I don't know. Um, 
what happened? I like I said, I saw you online yesterday. What you doing, man? Uh, it's a six one by the way. Had the car tight. Oh, you still talking about that three hundred the AC and then the car died. AC. All right. Take this serpentine belt off and see what happens. Then I mean, one of those accessories could be spiking stuff out. I'm just throwing out scenarios right now. All right. But I would take the belt off and run the car and see what happens. You can't run it for long because you know you can burn up some. Sounds like something in logic is screwing it, but um, that is, yeah. I mean, it could very well be that. I've seen computers do that. They should be able to tell if the condition are present for the fan to turn on and if it's not. What kind of whack ass deal is that? Can't tell what's wrong with a Chrysler car. Computer messed up. Um, I mean, duh, there have been a whole bunch of times we, even me, have replaced computers for nothing. I told you. Computers are looking for inputs and will act on those inputs by way of outputs. So if the input ain't there on this computer, it's not going to be there on a new computer. All right. I'm just saying. So make sure everything is looking for is actually there. Now, if you get all your input data in that required to run that fan and your fan still ain't coming on, you could have an output driver failure. All right. Yeah, and because simply because you can use your scan tool to turn it on, I'm not sure if the scan tool bypass that driver and just hardwire straight or just do it manually like that. If that's the case, then yeah, an output driver inside the computer could be failure. Again, that's only if you're 100% sure all your inputs are there. Uh, yeah, maybe yes. Okay, a lot of vehicles don't even turn the fan on until 2.30. It should definitely run when the AC is on. Yeah. When it, and when the AC is on, like I say, in some cars, some cars is automatic. PT Cruise, as soon as you turn the AC on, this is the newer, more sophisticated cars looking at high side pressure. So where is it getting that information from? A high side pressure switch or transducer? Yeah, a lot of cars, a lot of newer cars come with a transducer that will convert that pressure into digital uh, something that computer can read and based off that pressure well you know the fan will come on or off but uh yeah air won't turn fan on either whoa i want to look at something when i get off of this you can see the temp gauge on the dash running way hotter than normal i own it over 10 years big block yes that's crazy i want to look at some she have the one on the bumper oh you know what i'm talking about they had a big it's solid state re uh relay maybe and even in the box, you still may see some relays called fan relay. But if I had to guess, the 2010 model, I have that black one right on the bumper. I want to go look at some when I leave here. No code, no bumper relay. Okay. I'm I'm going, I'm headed over. Uh, oh, I am wrong. What do you mean? They almost missed the stream. What's up, Dark Man? Got a storage cart from Amazon and was putting it together. Man, you always up to something. Hey, look at this stranger. What is going on, lady? How are you? Rocks rolls on. <laughs> I think she changed her name again. It was just Rocks Rolls at one point. Now she done added on. Her last name is On. How you doing, Mrs. On? Good to see you. It's been a minute. Thanks for stopping by. What? <laughs> Dylan wants to talk to a Dodge Tech line. Oh, they gonna call Chrysler Hotline. Yeah, I'm going to tell you the response they're going to get. Guys, I found out the hotline people that we call, like I consider myself a professional, right? A well-experienced, trained professional. So when I call for help, I want somebody that's better than me. Natural instinct, right? What the hell do I, am I talking to a college graduate fresh out of freaking college? Because he is the middleman between me and the engineer. So they hire guys, set them. Some of them may be even working from home. I mean, that's such a computer job that you can do that from home. And you know what? When I get tired of turning wrenches, I'm going to be a star agent. All right? Just sit at home with the headphones on, that little mic thing ringing out of my mouth. I'm going to be solving car problems, or at least trying to. Now, again, it's like when I go to the training center. I don't want to go to the training center and listen to some new guy that ain't even worked in a shop yet. He fresh out of college. 
dude, your hands ain't even, your calluses ain't even dirty. You ain't done nothing. How you going to show me how to build a, a differential when you ain't never done one out in the real world? I don't want to hear from those guys. So I get offended when that happens. Same go with Starline, StarTech. He's going to talk to a regular Joe Blow if the if it becomes too technical, he's going to be transferred to an engineer. And I'm going to tell you this right off the bat. An engineer don't know jack crap about no 2010. An engineer brain is so far out there. An engineer right now is sitting there and going, man, these 2027 models, they're going to be tight, guys. It's like a whole room full of engineers. They so far ahead. They talking five, six, seven years from now. All right. They already got 2024, 2025 in the bag. Them, them jokers sitting up in the office drinking a beer, having fun. Look at that JT online guy. He think he knows. He don't know nothing. He don't have a clue what's coming down the pipe. All right. So they way out there. They don't know jack about no 2010. But I can tell you this. They have resources that they can go back to. Okay. So they got information, they notes uh when somebody else last person called on this, it was that. All right. They keep all that in the database. So they have that at their, their disposal. All right. But fresh out the back, you call an engineer. All right. This is Uncle Mark. My 2010 fan won't come on. <laughs> Excuse me, Uncle Mark. Did you say 2010? Yeah, I said 2010. I was online and I asked JT and them, but they they don't really know right now. So the tech wanna know, can I call you? And I got through. <clears throat> Again, did you say 2010? <laughs> hey guys, there was some guy on the phone asking me about a damn 2010 model. <laughs> Let me stop. Uncle Mark, that ain't funny. Uh, but <clears throat> that ain't close from the nah, that's close to the truth as you can get. Them jokers brain way out there. All right. They thinking about 2028 20, at the most. They already got, like I say, 25, 26 in the bag. Man, let me get out of here, man. Uh, Y'all always have me tripping. Carlos, my dude Fluff Dog in the building. Uh, Centra, oh, my goodness, you let your daughter buy a Centra. A fish. Ah, why you say that? Uh, Rocks Rose. Because I skipped Tuesday. Oh, okay, you skipped Tuesday. Hell no, one hour minimum It's out of one. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, Rock Rose, why, what on earth? I gotta go to the bottom, y'all. It's 9 13. Wiring diagram goes into mystery computer inside, does not explain. I'm gonna go check my sources, Uncle Mark, when I get off here. How, do I have your email address? How do I get in touch with you? Oh, uh, Uncle Mark, you, you buy your camera, you, you buy, um, are you? Are you by a camera? We can go through some things on, on the computer when I get off of here. All right, in about five minutes. We can if you can fire up your cameras, I can send you a link. I'll start a uh, uh another stream yard event and we can go look at some stuff together. All right. Um, uh, I don't know if you're still on it. I'm I'm at the top of the list. So um uh, if you got a camera set up, or you can use your phone, it don't matter. Use your phone. We can look at some things and set it on the stand where I can hear you and all that. I seen your stream yard link and we can go through some stuff. Okay, Tom got some. Uh, let's not explain what's going on. Check for coolant leak from sensor wiring 2010. Oh, yeah. Tom, would that injector harness affect that? The one that get this. But uh, well, he said it's a four liter, not really a, a three, three or three eight. Huh. I'm going to piss y'all off with my extended warranty fixes here. <laughs> you don't piss me off. I ain't there. Fix limp mode issues, radiator leak, oil filter, housing leak. Now, 302, including $100 deductible. Dang. Dang, girl. Rocks roll. You, uh, you're going to be some problems with this. This I miss when we didn't need the internet to update models. Yes. Uh, uh, things are changing, man. Hey, sir, I got a Dodge Ram 1500. I got another computer. In a burnout, and then I got a used PCM this morning. Still ain't cranking. Do I need to check my fuse? My God, you got a no crank situation. There's a whole bunch of things you should be checking before you even look at that PCM. All right. So, um, I you, you left off the year. I don't know how new this thing is, but yeah, you computer should be the last thing you're checking on a no crank situation. I mean, that's too many things, other things that can go wrong. With a no crank, all right. 
Oh, you want something like that? You need to act nice and they're yeah, they're liable to be they, exactly, man. Why are people thinking fussing gonna get them farther in life? I mean, they ain't got it. You one mile out of warranty. They can say, I don't know what to tell you, lady. What the hell you out of warranty? All right, we're not paying a dealership to do that. Uncle uh 69 dollar man, you got a point, man. I give things dealt by being nice and reasonable. Not always, but many times. Yeah, man. Try a different approach. Trying to bulldoze somebody ain't not always work. Hey, when Shield goes goodwill. Yeah, about the same advice, though. <laughs> it's like they get pride. They get happy. They come fluff dog. They come back and tell you, guess what? I got it approved. What do you mean? You got the customer approved or the one? No. Guess what? I got warranty or they'll approve it. As if I'm going to really be happy. Now, again, you got to, there's a thin line between showing a little sensitivity toward the customer, okay? At the end of the day, she want a car fix. So a mechanic cannot show his displeasure because you got your car covered under warranty. Good for you, all right? It's just some bullets we have to take, some we have to bite, some we have to, all right, and hope for the best on the next repair, okay? Yeah, it happens a lot, guys. That's nice. Car dealers don't play nice. Again, it's not our call. Who's that? Dar Hemi, what's up, man? It's not our call. Dar the dealership can't got no freaking powers whatsoever. Everything they're going to do to your car that's technically under warranty, they have to get approved. All right? They want, that's the only way they get paid. I got a claim once rejected, okay, because I messed up on some paperwork. So the warranty company didn't pay none of the ticket. I got sat down in the office by the boss. All right, what are we going to do about this bill? What the hell do you mean what are we going to do? You jacked up on the paperwork. I didn't submit something, a check in July sheet or something. I didn't submit right. And Christ was like, denied. They denied the whole claim. The customer at home with her car fixed happy. The pole dealership going, who going to pay for this? I ain't paying for nothing. You pay for it. I ain't paying for nothing. What are we going to do? I don't know, dog. I don't know what to tell you. So, yeah, everything got to be on point when stuff is warranty or somebody ain't getting paid. <sighs> yeah, it's crazy, man. <laughs> Scotty, what Scotty said. <laughs> I see you as a guy on paper to help you answer the question. Your time is money. Oh man, it's cool, man. Like I, I think I just actually I don't know how far I am with the comments, but can you, I'm going to the bottom. How about that? I'm going way to the bottom because oh my goodness. I didn't know all of this was going on. Oh my goodness. All right. That service manager literally making up numbers. When you not on the warranty, he goes, I think this sucker can pay. <laughs> Shut up, man. I ain't gonna let you let you sit here. My man has been at the deal of over a week. Just today, got the radio and the oil leak okay by assuring. Oh, that's different. Right. They, they, they're not going to touch it until they assure that assurance is going to pay them. They had to send a guy out. Yeah, inspector. They send them out all the time. What they want to see? That kills me when they send an inspector out to look at the obvious. He come out and go, yep, it's leaking oil. <laughs> the fuck? Let me stop. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh Hell, we can't even deny warranty. Uh, we have to call it in to get it declined if we determine foul play. That goes on a lot too, guys. You can't void your warranty by doing stupid things like adding 24-inch wheels and now your differential busted. Y'all remember that Jeep I posted? They added some to the tent and then they thought it was under warranty. Nah, dog. Even sludge, big dogs have to decline warranty unless the customer makes the repairs uh, necessary. Okay. Uh, they wouldn't take the pictures the dealer sent. Wow. So they sent an adjust out. Interesting. All right, guys. I have to go. Hey, oh. Uh, dealership took this guy beans and charged him 4K and additional 3K, all for a customer trying to demand how to do the repairs. Whoa. Whoa. Uh DC computer. That's uh that's crazy. I mean, if the dealer charges, hold on, $200 an hour, does JT get? No, it don't work like that, man. You get whatever you negotiated with your boss at the time, okay? It used to be a quarter, okay? Guys used to get a quarter of whatever the shop bring in. What's the quarter of $250? So let's say if every tech in the shop was getting a quarter, 
and the dealer bringing in 200 that means every tech makes 50 dollars per hour yeah the dealer bringing in 200 here's your cut of the pie or some guys that's not so good they can only negotiate 20 dollars per hour so the dealer walking away with 180 dollars per hour off your back guys that's just the way of life that's that's why you raise the stake when you become better at your craft. You can demand more off of the top. First, you got to know what the top is. A lot of shops don't even want you to know. You go ask your boss, what do we charge an hour? You be like, why? Why you want to know, dog? Why you knows it? Why it ain't your business, dog? You might be trying to ask for a raise. Why you want to know what we charge an hour? Because I heard JT and them say I should be getting a quarter <laughs> of whatever y'all bringing in. Well, you tell JT, the car guy, to shut his damn mouth because he don't know. Let me stop, man. Uh, some serious stuff going on here. Uh, Uncle Mark, what did I do? Thank you, uh, Evan and Rodriguez. Good night. Like, bro, get out of here. I need to continue working. <laughs> I am. I'm done, man. Customer trying to tell the dealership. Well, where, where did Uncle Mark go? Oh, um, I need to sell football tables to afford to fix up the. Oh my goodness, you got a Tesla? It's broke. Uh, bring a group of you need a donor. I meant to say the 2023 Sonoda. What? The 2023. Ah, I see that Tom, uh, Tom Cook. Get out of here. Sonoda will not let you stop to drop a person off. Damn. Okay. <laughs> Tom said he get half. <laughs> so, Tom getting $100 an hour if his shop bringing in 200 All right, Tom, you the big baller. Let me hold some. All right, you have to put it in park also. Okay. JT just now. Where are you sending to? Um, I'm about to go, guys. I got to go. We're going to me and Uncle Mark going to take care of some business right quick. That's all I have. Uh, Uncle Mark. What is my... I think I've emailed you before. I'm going to check all my emails. And uh, I'm going to send you a link, a StreamYard link. We're going to go look at some stuff together. All right, let's see what... Uh, like I say, set your phone up, whatever you're using, where I can hear you and all that good stuff. And we're going to do, let's see what we can come up with. Tech needs to start making money off parts. Ah, right, that ain't going to happen. We remove them and install them. How the hell the people that don't make the most off the ticket? I agree. But it ain't going to, at least at our shop, it ain't going to happen. Uh, we have email. Okay, good. Uh, fluffed out. Good point. Like I say, Maybe at Nissan, y'all might pull some strings, but it ain't going to happen our way. So, uh, yeah, the parts manager will have a freaking fit. All right. All right, Trashy. Thanks for jumping on, man, with all your inputs. Thanks for jumping in, Rocks and Roll. Appreciate you, uh, uh, Darhemi. Guys, I'm out. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all 